Hello and welcome to Red Tree Church's online service. We just wanted to say thank you so much for listening in today. And no matter where you are tuning in from, we love to stay connected with our online community, whether that's through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Church Center app, or of course our podcast. And whether this is your first time listening or your hundredth time listening, we hope that you are encouraged and inspired by today's message. So let's take a listen. Hey, good morning, Red Tree Church. How's everybody doing this morning? <clears throat> Good, good, good. My throat, my throat's a little scratchy, and so uh, I apologize if I have to cough or eat another mint. I'll do my best to not be too distracting. Hey, man, thank you guys so much for last night. Uh, it was awesome to get to be a part of that. We uh, were supposed to do a trunk retreat, as most of you know, and then with the rain, chances coming, we decided to move it inside, which was nuts. Um, but it was awesome. We had, as soon as you walked in, wrapped around all the way outside the auditorium, all the way around the auditorium. The hallways were full of candy and people in here, right there, set two bounce houses, and we had some games going on over here. I love this church. Like, I love that you guys, yeah. I love that you guys want to be involved in the community. You want to you wanna help kids. You want to be a part of watching God show up and show out. And that's exactly what happened last night. We had about a thousand people, 900, a thousand people walk through this space. Um, it started at about six o'clock and it did not slow down until 735. And so there was a line out the door, wrapped around the building, going back up the parking lot. I was like, man, this is the best nightclub in Springfield, right? <laughs> so Club Jesus on, right? There you go. There you go. Somebody like, can we dance? Oh yeah, you can dance. Yeah. Just don't go too Old Testament because David got naked and we don't need none of that up in here, all right? Don't need none of that. And some of you are like, man, I love it when he talks like that. You weird. Anyway, anyway. Hey, thank you guys for being here. We're going to be in the book of Joshua chapter 6, uh, but we're going to kick it off in Hebrews chapter 10. So you can go ahead and start finding your places there. Listen, if you don't know where your place is in the Bible, never be embarrassed to go to the front of the book of the Bible or the front of the Bible and find your page numbers in the table of contents right there. Uh, not everyone in here knows everything about the Bible. If you're in here today and you know everything that there is to know about the Bible, please make yourself known real quick. All right, none of us are in here. We're all disqualified of that. So don't worry about people judgmenting or being judgmental towards you about that. That's not going to happen in here. If they are, we'll ask them to leave. Amen. As a joke, chill out. Chill out, guys. Hey, listen, when you walked in, you should have received a towel. All right, everyone has a towel. It, 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 have you ever been a part of a group where you, you get to do rally towel? You know, something like this, you know? Now I know a lot of y'all Chiefs fans, so you're not familiar with this. But, um, oh, 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 oh. So this is, a, this is actually for y'all crying towels, what this is. So, um, hey, listen, I get to make jokes like that because I'm a Cowboys fan and I know a lot about crying towels is what I know a lot about. When you got to reach into your attic to get your VHS down to watch your highlight film, it's never... Good, okay? So get off of me, leave me alone, and I'm still going to pick on y'all. But this towel represents maybe where you are today, okay? So everyone got a towel, and we want you not to necessarily just walk around and like twirl them up and like snap people with them. That's fine. If it's your own kids, don't snap any other kids, all right? But this, this is a situation we're going to talk about today about throwing in the towel. Just giving up, getting done with it, and throwing in the towel because you're tired because you've tried too much, because you thought God should have done something and he didn't do something, because you've tried to be obedient, like you're listening to the right songs, you're participating in the right small groups, you're doing all the right things, but God isn't doing what you felt like he should do. So you're really contemplating, I'm just going to throw the talent, I'm, I'm going to throw it in, I'm going to be done, no more trying, no more effort on my part. Like some of y'all are going to such exi I mean, such lengths of trying to get things figured out. Like you're listening to the right podcasts. You're listening to the right songs. Some of y'all going to Mar Mardell's. That's the only place you buy your Christian bubble gum now, right? You're buying the right Christian bubble gum. You're buying the right Christian t-shirts. You're wearing the right Christian and everything you're trying to do. But at the end of the day, you feel like it's just not working out. And you're ready to kind of just throw in the towel. Well, I want to talk to that today, and, and we're going to look at a couple passages, and we'll be able to begin to walk through this. And so, uh, if you would, Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 35, Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 35, it says this, So do not throw away your confidence, it will be richly rewarded. You need to, here's where we're going to focus on, you need to 
persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has planned. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, thank you for the worship that we've already experienced through singing. Lord, I pray, God, that your spirit would be known here. God, that you, you would remove all distractions. Lord, that you would help me to speak your truth. Father, help me to speak your truth and love. Lord, anoint me with your spirit. Hide me behind your cross. And help us to know that we have an opportunity that we can look more like your son today. For those who are here that may not have a relationship with you, God, I pray that through today's conversation may be an opportunity to take a step closer to investigating faith. Lord, we pray that you show up. God, we ask you show out. And you do only what you can do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I love that last part of that verse there in verse 36. It says this again. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Now, have you ever been like on a journey? Have, have you ever been out somewhere and you're doing something and you know it's going to be difficult? You know it's going to be complex. There's going to be some struggles. There's going to be some hurdles along the way. And you kind of felt like maybe you didn't go far enough. You kind of felt like maybe like it, it, you didn't hit the, the, the right direction and you gave up too soon. Uh, Jessica and I had a really awesome opportunity to go on a trip this last summer. And, and you had to walk a long way to be able to see these things that people were talking about. And so it was a huge glacier. But when, when, when you pull up, it's 45 degrees and it's raining and it's cold. And then you just get wet instantly. Now, my, my beautiful bride, we, we're very limited on what we could, what we could take. What's wrong, honey? We're very limited on what, what we could take because we were traveling. And so I'm like, I'm like, I'm the type of guy that I can pack 14 outfits. You give me a duffel bag and I can get it in there. That is not my wife. And so I said, babe, you know, I'm a tightwad. And so we ain't, we ain't going to do a carry on or a, a, we, we ain't going to be checking a bag today. So I need you to get everything. You get two bags. You get a carry-on and you get a personal item. Get everything in there. And she's like, okay. Well, she packs this thing. Like, it looks like a, 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 a lamb. Like, it's got a, it's a lamb. I'm pretty sure it came from lamb. And it's just all wool. I'm like, what are you doing with that thing? So we get here. We go out. 45 degrees, raining. And she's like, I'm just going to wear this. I'm like, you are not wearing a goat out in the rain. Like, <laughs> this is not going to work. I said, here, take my raincoat. I knew we're going somewhere. What do I bring? I bring a raincoat. Why do I bring a raincoat? Because it's like, it's going to be raining. I need a raincoat. So I get that. I said, you take mine. You wear it. She wears it. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt now. I'm not about to put on her goat that she got for me to wear. And we go walking and it is pouring down so much so there's like two inches. I kid you not, two inches of water constantly flowing across the path that you have to walk on. So now my shoes are wet, my socks are soaked. I'm not very happy. It is really freezing cold. And I'm just like, for real? And she's like, oh, man, you want to go farther? I'm like, absolutely I do. I am so excited, you know, because here's the deal. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We're never coming back. I promise you that. We ain't never coming back. <laughs> but we, walked, we, went, we persevered a little further. One, because I knew what the reward would be. She's going to be happy. That's all, that's all I cared about. I wanted to make her happy in that moment. And I'm not. And so my attitude reflected that. And so it was like instantly, like, Chad, don't do this if you're going to be upset about it, right? Don't do this if you're going to hold it over her head. Anybody relate to that? Mm -hmm. Don't do this if you expect anything in return. Anybody relate to that? Yeah, exactly. And so it was like, just do this because you love her. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Wet underwear, wet socks. I mean, everything. It's, it's, all, it's all terrible. And you just keep walking. You're just like, mm, this is so much fun. And, you know, it's like, you have to walk like this. Like, bro, you all right? Yeah, I just look golden. It's all right. Don't worry about me, though. It's all good. Right? <laughs> Any of you ever been to Six Flags when it rains? Same exact story other than it's not 45 degrees. Some of you are like, did he just say golden from stage? I think he did. I think he did. But he had to persevere to be able to see this magnificent, beautiful glacier that we could barely see through the rain and the fog. <laughs> but it was, it was an experience. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah. But it was an experience that we'll forever have. And it was rewarding because we can talk about these things. I think in some of our faith, some of your personal lives, God has led you to a direction. God is leading you to a direction. And for some of you, you're like, nah, it just, it, just, it, ain't, it ain't worth it. 
my feet are cold, I'm getting, I'm just, or maybe it's just too hot. I'm just, just, the timing's not right. I don't have enough this. I mean, you can come to all kinds of reasons and why you shouldn't continue to do what you're supposed to do. But God said, hang on a second. I told you this is what I want you to do, and I need you to do these things. But some of you are like, you know what? I think I'm going to throw the towel in. I'm going to throw it in and be done with it, and we're just going to see what happens after that. That's not a good space to be in. So let, let, let's look at a, a study that was done real quick. Um, I, I want to share with you just some results of it. Uh, an, a lady named Angela Duckworth did a study at Harvard and Oxford. And the study was this. Why do successful people succeed? How many of you want to be successful people? Anybody? Listen, that's not an arrogant statement. All right, There's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful. It's just when success takes you, then, then, then we got problems. All of us want to be successful. All of us want to someday in our casket have people walk by and talk about maybe an influence that we were in their lives. Or maybe how we helped them or did something for them. We all want to be successful, so it just depends on what you call success. But she did this study. So she did a study at West Point Military. She did a study with teachers that were in some of the toughest school districts in the United States. And then she did a study with some national spelling bee individuals. How many of you are the world's worst spelling bee individuals out there? Yeah, you see people get up there and spell Mississippi, and you're just like, man, there's genius. So genius. And then all of a sudden you're like... They mess. There's too many S's in that. Oh, okay. That, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe that was right. Maybe that was right. You got me on that one, right? So you're not necessarily the best spelling bee champion. But what she found out, the most important quality wasn't their IQ. How many of you are like, whew, thank the Lord for that. I still have a chance, right? I don't have to be extremely smart. But what she did find out was it was the AQ, the adversity part that allowed them to continue to move forward, even though there was adversity along the way. This is what kept teachers teaching when other people quit. This is what kept people in the military committed because they were able to get past the struggle. They didn't bail out. This is why you see so many great people that have experienced such hardship who have began to persevere beyond that. And you look at them and go, how do you do it? How have you been able to continue to conquer? How have you been able to continue to move forward because of the difficulties that's in your life? And Joshua, we're going to talk about this today, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua's at a situation, the Israelites, they've been wandering around 40 years. They're upset, they're mad, we're supposed to be able to do this, we ain't doing nothing, we don't have a leader, we're not sure what's going on, we love Moses, but we're stuck here. Now we got Joshua and we want to see a victory. We want to see something good happen. And so let's pick it up at Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, it's going to be on the screen, and I put it on the screen in the NLT, which is the New Living, the, the New Living Translation. And so I'm going to read it from the screen today. Uh, but and, and So j just listen to how this falls right here. Verse 1, it says, Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out. And no one was allowed to go in. Verse 2. But the Lord said to Joshua. Watch what he says. I have given you Jericho, its kings, and its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. So everybody understand this order so far? You and your men should march around the town once a day for six days. And he goes on. Uh, seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can, then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can change or can charge straight into the town. I love the verbiage of this because if, if, if you just read it and kind of move on, you, you miss a little bit of it. But if you would go ahead and throw verse 2 back up on the screen for me. Because there's, there, there's a key part here. What God is speaking to Joshua. You see, Joshua is the leader of the Israelites. And so he is going and finding himself in different, in different places at different times. So that he can be alone with God. So that he can lead the way that God is impressing upon him to lead. And listen to what God tells Joshua about Jericho. In the present tense tells him about the past of what he's already done of what the future needs to be that makes sense everybody clear on that okay here we go if you don't understand that 
Go back and read it later. Watch this. But the Lord said to Joshua, watch this, I have given you Jericho. And Joshua must have thought, <laughs> say what? What do you mean you're giving me Jericho? We're standing out here right now. Look at them walls. I mean, it's not that long around. We can walk around it, no problem. But this sucker is huge. You've not given me Jericho. And then look what he says. Not just Jericho, but it's king. And he goes on. And you're going to have all of its strong warriors. And Joshua must have thought, God, you stressed out. Because we're standing outside of what you're saying you've already given me. And I see nothing but obstacles. Anybody able to relate to that? God, I know. I know what you want me to do. God, I know what was best. God, I know the things you lead my family to do. Lord, I, I, I believe what you can do. And I believe what you, can, what you have said. But God, I don't see anything but obstacles right now. And Lord, if I'm just being real honest, I don't know what you're doing. Because you just seem stressed out. My family's not good. My work life is terrible. My kids are stressing me out. My spouse and I don't even talk. We're hurt. What do you mean you have given us Jericho? Because all I see are the walls. So why, why, why would we as Christ followers, if you're here this morning, you're a Christ follower, believing that God is truth, believing that God is a God of yes, that God is a God of promises, and believing that when God makes a promise, he ain't going to alter that promise, is he? When God says, thus saith the Lord, you better believe, thus saith the Lord, and that is how it is going to be. Amen, Red Tree? When God speaks and God makes a promise, you can put that in your pipe and smoke it, right? It is for real. That is how this thing works. But for Joshua, standing outside looking at these walls going, oh, man, I want to believe you. You know, the only thing that we are responsible for is obedience. And some of you are like, oh, that's real cute. The only thing we're responsible for is obedience. We're not responsible for the outcome. We are responsible for obedience. Through our obedience, we will see God do some crazy awesome things because of our obedience, and we will see amazing outcomes. So Joshua leans into this, and, and, and he answers a lot of questions. The, the question I want to ask is this, why do we give up? Why do we give up? Why do we think it's time to throw in the towel? If God is who he said he is, if we read about Jesus in the New Testament, if we're Christ followers, if we believe what he said, if we believe how he lived, why do we give up? Up, and this is not a beat down. This is not anything like that. Because this is in my own life, in my own heart. I'm speaking to you about what I've had to go through in my own situations. Some of you know my past. You know where we've been as, as pastors, as leaders. Uh, man, we've been able to plant Red Tree 10 years ago and be able to be here to lead it for 10 years. And it's just been, it's been awesome. Um, two years ago, wanted to quit. Wanted to throw in the towel and was tired of it, right? And was just so stressed out. People was mad at me. People was upset at the church. People didn't like the leadership team. You should have closed earlier. You shouldn't have closed. You need to tell me who to vote for. You better keep your mouth shut. You, I mean, on and on we went and went and went and went. And then all of a sudden it's like, what in the world is the church becoming, right? Not just Red Tree, but church as a whole. My buddies would call, man, we're shutting down. Like, not just like shutting down for a, a little bit, we're closing our doors. We can't meet anymore. And the pressure of that and the thought of that, it's like, God, what are you doing? And many of you know, I come up on a Tuesday and just prayed and cried and wept and asked God, could you please remove me? Because I'm tired. I do not have what it takes anymore to persevere through this. My family's tired, I'm tired, and I don't know if I can get excited about it again. Anybody ever been there before? Anybody ever been there before? You see, it's those moments where you have an opportunity to either lean into God, or you can just say, God, I'm out. And so we, we continue to pray about it. We continue to watch through. And one of the coolest things that's happened this year alone is we've seen like 68 people accept Christ 
at Red Tree Church. Like, I just, the, the work that God continues to do and the way he continues to draw people to himself has been so amazing. And so, again, it's nothing like, oh, that's awesome, Chad, look what you did. No, 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 it ain't me. It's God working through me. It's God working through Joshua to lead the Israelites to do what God said to do. You know, it's not like, hey, let's just go get the excavator and we're just going to knock this place down real quick, right? Hey, let's just swing the big old ball and knock them walls down. No, God had a plan and Joshua was the leader and he was going to implement it. Now, can you imagine being part of that army though, right? I mean, guys, your wife sends you a text and she's like, hey, warrior, woo, how you doing, my big hunk of meat, man, yeah. What, how many did you kill today? He's like, well, we did some stretches, okay, just, just stretches. And uh, <clears throat> kind of more like a marching band style right now. Uh, Joshua's under a lot of pressure, okay, and so we're not really sure what we're going to do, but today we marched around a building, right? And she's like, what is wrong with you, right? I thought you was in an army. I am in an army. Don't you be browbeating me about this. This is what we're doing. And then get up again. Second day. Maybe we're going to do this again. All right. Second day we're at it. Hey, my warrior, what did you do? Well, we did some more stretches, okay? And so we're really, we're getting limber, really limbering up, right? We're really getting after it, going to do some great things. We, we just walked around the building again. And we prayed. And Joshua did some really weird things. Now, well, let's pick this up in verse 10. I, I love what Joshua says in verse 10. Yeah, verse 10 says this, do not shout. What he tells them, do not even talk. <laughs> why would Joshua tell them that? Well, because some of y'all just negative Nancy. That's why, right? It doesn't matter what happens. Someone's going to have something negative to say, ain't they? Right? Like, hey, man, we want to bless you with a gift. Here's $100. Like, why isn't it $1,000? Like, for real? Like, man, we want to bless you. We want, here's a nice meal. I like steak instead of lasagna. Make your own steak, right? But Joshua knew that maybe the, maybe the soldier in front of you wasn't as excited about the task at hand that you are. And so Joshua knew that if the soldier in front of you starts talking about, man, this is so dumb. Can you believe we're having to walk around this? I thought we were getting in here to like, we're going to slay some people. We're going to do some stuff, man. And here we are in a marching band, right? 110 trombones. Da, 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 da. Like, like this is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. This is an army. No wonder people are making fun of us. No wonder we've been wandering around for 40 years, and here we are. Joshua said, hey, don't talk. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout them down, boys. Then watch, he says, so the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day, and then everyone returned to spend the night in the camp. And then you must thought, oh, boy, here we go. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests again carried the ark of the Lord and then the seven priests with the ram's horn marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the army, the armed men marched in front of the priests with the horns and beside the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and they returned to camp. Then they followed, or they followed this pattern for six days. Can you imagine what that sixth day must have been like? Like, man, this is, this is ridiculous. I, I don't even know what we're doing anymore. I feel like he doesn't know what we're doing anymore. I feel like we're supposed to be doing, I, I have a way better idea. If they would just listen to me, mm, come on now, mm, come on now. If they would just do what I say they need to do, this place would be so much better. Come on now. Now, I'm not saying that's you, but we know people like that, don't we? Mm-hmm. And then if you know the story, Joshua walked around the walls of Jericho seven times. And on that seventh time, he commanded them, shout, and it all came tumbling down. Wouldn't it have been a lot better on like day two? They see like a crack. Like, all right, we're doing something, right? Isn't it easier to continue with perseverance when you see a little bit of progress? Like, right, God, show me something. Lord, let me know I'm just not out here doing this thing on my own, but help me to follow you. And I need to see something. It's no different with Jesus in the New Testament, right? Because the, the, the leaders, the Pharisees, the scribes, the people following Jesus at times said, hey, we know you're Jesus. We know you've done these other things, but can you do this for us? Can you perform this miracle? Can you just, and Jesus like, all you guys want from me is to be fed again. 
is to protect you, is to provide for you, is to do all the miracles. But that's not what this is about. And I imagine God was saying the same thing to Joshua. Be obedient. You need to persevere. You need to move forward. You need to continue to do what I've called you to do. Uh, how many of you went to Sunday school before you started coming retro? Anybody? And you, and you hear a song goes like this. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of, and the walls came. Okay, with hand movements. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't, don't, do, it. don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And listen, someday when you meet Joshua in heaven, don't you dare break that song out for him. Because he's going to say, that's the stupidest song I've ever heard in my life. He said, man, we have been together for 40 years. And you have no idea the pain and the hurt and the difficulties that we faced. You have no idea the circumstances that we were been through. There were moments that we were so scared, all of us doubted that God even existed for 40 years. And someone writes a song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And is that, man, that ain't even close to being real. You see, some of y'all been fighting a battle for a long time. And God hasn't done what you thought he should do. Joshua would say, oh, oh, it wasn't just seven times. This is way longer than that. This has been a 40 year period. It was seven days was short. And God miraculously showed up, showed out. And he was right when he said, hey, I have given you Jericho. It's kings, it's warriors. I've given it to you. You already possess it. Now I need you to do this though. For you to get that, you need to be obedient. Red Tree, let me ask you a question. On day five, what if you would have given up and went home? I was so tired of this. And then on day eight, news travels. Did you know that army that Joshua's leading has taken Jericho? And all of a sudden you go, oh, I missed it. I missed it. God, I had followed you for so long and I thought I knew what needed to happen. God, I have been so faithful. Lord, I have been praying for my kids. I've been praying for my grandkids. I've been praying for my family. I've been praying for all this. God, I had been doing this so long. And I walked away on day six. And you mean to tell me on the seventh day, on the seventh time around this, because they marched and they yelled, you think that's a formula? That's no a formula. It is obedience to God and persevering in difficult times. And when you see God show up and when you see God show out, man, that is energizing for you. But when you leave, or you quit on day six, it crushes you. Now, if you've left on day five or day six, I have great news for you. God is a forgiving God. God is a redeeming, a restoring, a loving God. And it's not that you've made the worst decision that you can never move forward from, I promise you that but it is you've made a decision that now you can learn from. It's you've made a decision that you can grow stronger in your faith because you knew, and at that moment, you were overcome by your own self, your own guidance, your own humanity, and did what you wanted, but then you seen God do something different and you go, I missed it. There is still grace to be found at the foot of the cross, amen? There is still forgiveness to be offered to all of those individuals who thought, I've messed up so much, I'll never be able to be back in the presence of God. And that is a lie from Satan. I've messed up so much, the church has already told me that I can't come back until this happens. And I'm so sorry. None of us are perfect. All of us have sin and all of us need the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. So this morning, I wanna give you an opportunity to respond back to him. For some of you, I, I have no clue where you are with faith. You may be on the outside kind of looking in at it 
and just like, yeah, well, you know, I, I thought about following Jesus, but I know too many people who say they do follow Jesus. And it just looks, it just looks gross. It, it, it looks nothing like Jesus. And so I, that's, that's my problem, Chad. That's why I can't get there. And I would just say, please, do not let anyone or anything or any circumstance keep you from following who Jesus truly is. Because Jesus died in your place. Jesus took your sin on him so that you do not have to make that payment. So that you can begin to follow him and live like Jesus today. I want everybody to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to give you an opportunity to respond back. For some of you, you're here and you are a Christ follower. But in that example of reading about Joshua, you may have been the one who decided this is, this is crazy. I can't do this no more. Or you may have decided this is ridiculous. I don't need to be treated like this. I deserve better than that. I'm out of here, I'm leaving. And you feel like you have lost the grace, the mercy, and the forgiveness of Jesus. And I want you to know that is not true. Earlier, the team sang a song about this is a song of a prodigal who's coming home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some of you, you need to return to God. And this is why you're here. This is this moment for you right here. You say, well, what does that look like? So does that, does that mean like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm asking God back into my life? No, see, you, you, you didn't lose Jesus. You lost your way. But for that relationship to be made new, you have got to confess some sin to him. You need to reach out to him. You need to ask him to forgive you of whatever it is that, that, that may have been. I'm, I'm not gonna start naming names or trying to figure things out. That's between you and God, where you are and where you need to be. So right now I'm gonna give you an opportunity just right there where you are and just begin to pray, God, here is where I am and this is where I know you want me to be. Father, I'm sorry. Father, I have sinned and I need you to forgive me. For some of you here this morning, you're not a Christ follower and you need to begin that relationship today. You need to ask him to forgive you of your sin to become your Lord and your savior. Because you know that you need a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've tried several other things and you know it's at the end of it, it's all empty. And so this morning, if you're here and you wanna to begin to follow Jesus, I wanna lead you in a prayer you can say it after me, you can say it out loud, you can say it in your head, whatever it is you'd like to do. But I want you to begin to say something like this. Dear Jesus, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and help me to follow you. I need you in my life today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed, no one looking around. If you said that prayer this morning and you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and to become your Lord and your Savior, would you do me a favor? Would you just slip your hand up real quick? Anybody else say, hey, you know what? I prayed this morning. Amen. Thank you. You can put it down. Anybody else? Just put it up. Put it back down. Anybody else? Put it up. Put it back down. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I pray, Lord, for those of us who are Christ followers, God, that there is distance between us. Lord, if there is sin in our life, anything that is not honoring or glorifying you, Lord, I pray that you would bring that to our mind. Lord, that we would confess that sin to you and we would begin to follow you and look more like your son, Jesus. Lord, for the individual who raised their hand and said, hey, you know what? Today, I am now a Christ follower. Lord, I pray that this will be a moment that they never forget and that Red Sheep would come alongside them and begin to disciple and help them and answer questions and walk with them and let them ask questions. And God, that we can help others understand 
what it is and what it looks like to follow you and to call you Lord and our Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. We just wanted to give a huge thank you to those of you that already partner with us through giving. And we've got multiple resources for you to utilize from to do that. You can give online, you can text the number 84321, or you can download our Church Center app. Again, thank you so much for listening today, and we'll see you next time.